Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive. Joe Zagacki with Don Bailey Jr., and the coach will be joining us momentarily. This week, the Hurricanes are back home at Hard Rock Stadium, 7 o'clock kickoff against the Duke Blue Devils. But, Don, the Canes are coming off a Friday night encounter against the Boston College Eagles. Boston College had 35 seniors, and that experience showed up. It certainly did, Joe. Plus, it showed up on the physical side of it. You know, you think about the way to execute with all that experience. That's one thing. But when you're when you're a fifth-year senior, which they were loaded with fifth-year seniors, and a fourth-year senior, you're 22, some 23 years old, and when you're playing against a DJ Scaife who's 18, and you've got 45 starts at defense, or 45 games at defensive end versus four games at, de at offensive tackle, there's such a mismatch of on the physical side and the experience side, and it eventually shows up. So I would have to say that Boston College, being the experienced team, it paid off for them. Uh, the running back came back, and uh, he, he had a bad ankle, so we thought, but he didn't look like he had a flat tire to me. No, he looked like he was running full speed ahead. I would enjoy having a guy like that here at the University of Miami. It, it's six foot one, 245 pounds, and can run and run through people and run around people and catch the football. And having somebody that size is, is such a force. It, it really beats up the opponent, especially in the third and fourth quarter. And you can see why he, Dylan w was so productive last year. Almost 1,600 yards was ACC Freshman of the Year. And He's healthy, and he is a big-time football player. The Miami offense scored 14 points, only two touchdowns. They left a lot of stuff on the field again. Yeah, they did, and, and it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate for Malik Rozier in one respect. Some of it is his fault because of the throws and the inaccuracy, but also if, you, if the receivers would have helped at times, it would help build his confidence. So, you know, it's, it's about execution. It's about doing your job, and football is the ultimate – team sport but at the end of the day you're talked to as a player about making sure your job is perfect if you do your job in unison with the other ones then you have a great play in the third quarter of the game Miami had the ball for 10 minutes they went three for five on third downs and they were outscored 10 nothing that changed that changed the game or it, it, it ended certain, the game it, it, well it, it, it put a faster ending to it than you and I would uh, want it but, you know, there were other things in that ball game. You know, the, the Boston College, you have to give them some credit. They, they came out and they had some long drives that, that drained the clock and scored points. You also had a bunch of tight ends that made plays. They were, and Coach Rook will talk about it, you know, at halftime, I think it's what, 17, 14, right? All of that that goes on for Boston College, and it's a three-point game going in at halftime. And Miami's just going to have to figure a way to overcome that. The Canes fall 27-14 to Boston College. Let's take a look back at our highlights brought to you by U-Health Sports Medicine Institute. Happy to have you with us on the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive, Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., and University of Miami head coach Mark Rick joining us. Hurricanes this week at home against the Duke Blue Devils at 7 o'clock at Hard Rock Stadium. We'll talk about that game, of course. Coach, uh, i got to look back at Boston College. Sure. Tough night uh, on the road. Uh, a battle almost to the, right then to the bitter end. Uh, not as much of a battle to the very end as we would hope. Uh, certainly... We uh, get ourselves in position to be first and nine, first play of the fourth quarter, uh, you know, inside the 10-yard line, obviously, and we don't knock it in. We get a touchdown there, that changes the game. You know, gets within one score, gets within six points, actually gets within one score of us taking the lead, puts pressure on their offense, and uh, changes the whole dynamic of the game. So, you know, that was a big turning point. 
Uh, the other thing was uh, that last drive we had before the half, we actually had a, excuse me, we actually had an open receiver going down the sideline for a walk-in touchdown, and we just couldn't get the ball out there. We, uh, you know, had a, a, a guy running the wrong route uh, in the guts of that play that kind of slowed down the progress of the, of the decision, but uh, the bottom line was we had good protection. We had had somebody open, and we just couldn't get it there. Uh, you know, those two plays or those two situations could have changed the game dramatically. Um, but, um, you know, overall, I mean, the guys did battle. They did fight. There's no issue with that. We just got to fight better, and, uh, you know, and we got to execute better. Coach DJ Dallas and the Wildcat, the running back, the return guy, getting a lot of touches. Yeah, we, we actually, our kickoff return team did a great job. The team in general did a wonderful job. The best blocking all year long, the greatest field position starts of the year. Um, set up the first touchdown. We got to about midfield, and that was a huge catalyst for that first touchdown drive. You know, the thing that killed us was the ball getting hit on the, you know, DJ it ball, it lets the ball hit him in the leg and the thing goes out of bounds at the two or three, whatever it was. You know, that's, you know, 32 yards of field position we lose. And then we had, we did have a couple penalties that, on punt return that got us backed up. And, um, you know, those are the things that, you know, good teams don't do and teams that win don't do. You know, we just can't have enough of those uh, types of situations that put us in bad, put us in a bad way. Um, you know, so and there's a lot of things that, that happened throughout the game that obviously we could have done better. I mean, there's a couple times we flipped the field and, uh, you know, got them down inside their 20. And we don't, we, you know, that, that's not a bad time to get a three and out, you know, and get the field position back. And, uh, you know, even after the time we went for it on fourth down, that first drive of the fourth quarter, you know, they're backed up, you know, inside the five. And, you know, we, we got a shot at making a stand right there. And, and putting the office in, in good position again to, to take another whack at it. But, you know, they end up moving it you know, all the way across the field and taking time and field position and all that kind of stuff too. So, you know, there was moments where everybody across the board could have done a better job and had a better outcome. I imagine uh, when you look back at a lot of it, uh, just off the top of my head, there must be, uh, must be a bit frustrating. You mentioned that uh, you had a receiver open in that last drive. Right. I also thought maybe even in the play where uh, there was a sack, you had a receiver coming open a little bit. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're um, Jeff Thomas. Yeah, Jeff Thomas. The exact same route that we ran against North Carolina last year where he had he ran the post for a touchdown right. was open by 12 yards or whatever I thought, it was. I thought he was open by about 10 yards in this one. Yeah, he was, he, was, he was. He was breaking wide open. Um, we had the perfect play for the coverage. Jeff makes a nice move. The cornerback is on his heels and just flat out didn't think he was going to run the post and was kind of settling down for like a corner route or some kind of out route. And he guessed wrong and he's running, he's running by him wide open. You know, I would hope we could hit that thing. Um, but you know, we get beat around the edge and uh, we don't get the ball off, but you know, should I have had a, a, a tight end or a back chip on the way out to help that tackle? freshman tackle, I probably should have. You know, that might have made a difference in that play. It would have made a, a difference in that play. So now should should we be able to pass set and block somebody? Yeah. But if a guy's struggling, you know, it's it's my job to do a better job to help him out. I know I'm, it's my annual, my weekly get in trouble with the officials, but I watched a game the other day where there were three targeting uh, calls. One team lost three players, and I watched uh, our game the other night and had a player take one right in the face mask and well, whistle. I don't mind saying it. Um, I think that uh, it was pretty classic. I mean, the, he, was, he was a defenseless player, and he was hit right in the head or neck area mm -hmm. with the man's face mask. That's part of his helmet. I mean, there, it was as clean as it could be, in my opinion. I actually had officials on the sideline telling me, get your offense ready to go. And we're getting our offense ready to go, and then all of a sudden they say no penalty. Now, somebody watched TV copy, and whoever this expert is supposed to be supposedly said there was no targeting. And that might have been what it eased everybody's pain and said no foul. But, you know, whoever's in charge of making those decisions have got to be, you know, able to say that is a targeting foul. That's, that's as classic of a shot as you can get. And, um, 
you know. Now, could could we or should we have scored without having to come down to that? Maybe so, but you know that obviously first and goal at the one gives us a pretty good chance to score at that point. And then you know why why the officials are telling me get your offense ready to go, and then all of a sudden it's it's no foul. I, I really didn't understand what happened there. All right, we'll come back with uh, more. It's Miami and Duke coming up on Saturday night, 7, uh, 7 o'clock at Hard Rock Stadium. More with head coach Mark Rick right after this. We continue now with the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive, Joe Zagacki and Don Bailey Jr., Miami and Duke on Saturday, Hard Rock Stadium, 7 o'clock, as uh, the Blue Devils roll into town. They're coming off a crazy game against Pittsburgh. It was about 110 to 100, the final score. I think it was 54 to 45. Uh, 1,200 yards of offense in that game. I don't even know where to start with this one, but uh, it's an important game for you. Let's start with uh, Duke on offense, Daniel Jones. Their quarterback's been around a long time. It'll be his third game against the University of Miami. They had a running back last week that had 400 yards of total offense. Yeah, they were they were prolific offensively for sure, and it, it does you know it starts with your quarterback and his ability to to you know run the system and run the ball and throw the ball well, and uh, he's he's a big, tall, tough dude. I mean. You wouldn't his stature. You would say the guy's probably not going to be a runner, but the guy is a runner. He, he's an athlete, and he'll pull the ball in zone read, and there'll be some QB run built into what they do, and he'll be able to scramble around and make plays. Uh, but uh, he's he's been around the block, as you said. He's he's into his third season as a starter, and uh, he's an outstanding player. He's a tough kid. I think he would he break a collarbone yeah, or something early, early in the year. Season, yep. <laughs> all of a sudden, he's still playing. I mean, the guy's tough and. Uh, Got a lot of respect for him. Coach, defensively, Duke has made a lot of upgrades. They seem to be faster and quicker and have gained some size. And Coach Cuffcliffe, it's taken him a while, but he's he's shored up that side of the ball. Yeah, I mean, after that ball game, you wouldn't say it. But they, they really have made a lot of improvements. Their personnel, as you mentioned, are, are, are different than they've been in the past. Guys that can really run, guys that are physical. Um, and uh, and they, they do a good job in what they do. They're not going to necessarily try to trick you, but um, they're going to try to out-execute you. Same thing in their kicking game, very, very solid in what they do and, uh, and good at what they do. Coach, let's go back to the quarterback side of it for Duke. They will sacrifice to Daniel Jones. He wants to. I mean, he wants to run and get hit. Getting hit at quarterback in this day and age is a part of the game. It used to be, you know, we were all raised, don't let the quarterback get touched. And that's true if he's standing in the pocket, but if he's involved in the in the running part of it, it's going to happen. Right. Yeah, you're going to get hit. I mean, um, and really, even if you're a drop back passer, sooner or later you're going to get hit. I mean, that's just the way way it is at that position. And if you are a true pocket passer and you're going to have to make a living there, you got to stand in there at the, and and focus downfield and throw the ball and and take some shots. The greatest quarterbacks in the pocket. That's how they play. That's how they live. And, uh, you know, pr the protection is not perfect every time. But most everybody in college, not everybody, but just about everybody in college has some form of a quarterback run. It may be just a pure quarterback draw. It may be the zone read where if an end crashes down trying to make the play on the back, you pull the ball and, and get what you can get and get out or get out of bounds. Or you may be a prolific runner who's going to make a safety miss and try to take it to the house, you know. You got all different styles and all different skill sets, but like you say, most most quarterbacks in college football have some facet of quarterback run in in their incorporated in their offense. All right, well, yeah, Duke coming up on Saturday. We have a month of the regular season to go. We've had some great times in the first two and a half years, going through some growing pains now, but still have a month of this regular season to go, right. and uh, and maybe some great things still to come. Yeah, there's there's a lot of exciting games to be played and. Uh, you know, everybody um, has the opportunity to come and enjoy it and be a part of it, make a difference, especially, like I said, at these home games. The more people that come and support our guys, the greater chance we have of winning, number one, the greater chance we have of recruiting great players. So it, it takes everybody to be number one. All right, Coach, the very best of luck. It will be Miami and Duke on Saturday night, 7 o'clock. Don and I will come back and wrap up the Mark Rick Show right after this.
Welcome back to the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive. Joe Jackie and Don Bailey Jr. It's Miami and Duke this weekend, 7 o'clock at Hard Rock Stadium as the Blue Devils roll into town. Let's uh, first talk about their offense. Daniel Jones is their quarterback. Another team with a bevy of tight ends and wide receivers. A running back that had 400 total yards last week against Pittsburgh. But it's a quarterback-friendly offense. It's funny that we're talking about players that had such great success. You had Jones last week that had high in touchdowns, high in yards, running back that had high in total yards, and they lost. But Daniel Jones, to me, I appreciate him. I appreciate how he throws the football, but I like his toughness. You know, this guy wants to run the football. He wants to carry the load, and he does a great job at it. And he is a true dual threat quarterback. He's got a big, strong arm. He's 6'4", 6'5", and when it comes time for him to pull it and run, he does it, and he doesn't duck away when it comes time to, to take on a, a, a defensive player. He tries to run over him. They have a bunch of wide receivers as well, and usually they have a bunch of guys that are sure-handed receivers, and uh, the, it's the same this year with their offense. Yeah, I'm, I hadn't got the names down yet, but that number three, I, I saw him immediately. They look for him all the time. He can run, he can jump, and there's, you know, they're not guys that are blessed with a lot of height, but their speed matches up, and they run great routes. And Coach Cutcliffe has always been an offensive guy, quarterback guy. He makes sure that his quarterback is throwing passes to receivers that there's a comfort level for both of them. And you mentioned the tight end. They've really started to add that to the equation. They've got a couple guys. Gray is one of them who came off a big game against Pitt and, and a loss, of course. But he had his most productive day as well. And they are a team that exclusively plays with five defensive backs. Uh, but their linebacker, 44, Joe Max Giles, a really good player. One of the most underrated players in the entire conference. Last year, he led the team in tackles. He was a preseason All-ACC candidate. You know, he's been mentioned as an All-American. He seems like he's been around forever. But he understands what he's supposed to do. He makes plays. He secures the tackle every single time. And he really is one of the heartbeats of that defense. Hurricanes have their identity on defense. Tackles for losses quarterback sacks, turnover chain. They have to play to all of those things. On offense, it's been more of a challenge for Coach Rick to try to find a personality. It is, Joe, because you've got young personalities. You know, personality comes from, uh, on football field, most of the time from the guys that have been around and established themselves. Now, you take DJ Dallas. You and I talk about him quite a bit. He burst onto the scene last year, was mildly productive, and this year he has his, his personality has matured and his play on the field has been stretched out. They've been able to use him in the Wildcat. They now have him on kickoff returns. He can catch the football. They've tried to use him to throw the football, but now you'll see him develop even more next year. So I think when you, when you look at, at teams with established players, most of those guys are juniors and seniors. All right, it will be the Hurricanes and the Blue Devils, 7 o'clock at Hard Rock Stadium, another night game. Hope to see you there for Don Bailey Jr. and University of Miami head coach Mark Rick. I'm Joe Zagacki. We'll see you next time right here on the Mark Rick Show. So long, everyone.